Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be talking about the Call of Duty World War II single player campaign. Now, I gotta say personally, it's been a while since I was actually excited to play a single player campaign for the Call of Duty franchise. They're usually very high quality production value and sort of a fun adventure, but the stories as of late have been sort of focusing around a lot of weird fictitious plot lines, some of them fairly far-fetched, and seeing Call of Duty return to the World War II theater of war certainly brought up some serious nostalgia for me because that's how I was introduced to the Call of Duty franchise with their original games that really just focused on single player um, and just had some incredible World War II missions and stories. And if you've been playing shooters for as long as I have, you'll know that there was a period in which almost all the shooters were just focusing on World War II. Every year there was a big World War II FPS title and it got a bit stale after a while and then the industry sort of turned away from these historical shooters for quite some time and they kind of went modern and they kind of went futuristic for a bit and now it seems like we're coming full circle with Battlefield doing Battlefield 1. We've got a ton of indie games doing World War II shooters and Call of Duty returning to its roots with an amazing World War II campaign. And yes, I'm gonna recommend it right from the beginning. This was a really fun, engaging, and well-written single player campaign. Not without its flaws, but I can get into a little bit of that later. I played this campaign through on PC at 1440p resolution, high frame rate, the graphics look stellar, and the set pieces are really breathtaking at times, and certainly much more meaningful since it is a real theater of war, and the things that happened are not that far off from what actually happened during these battles. Now the very first mission is almost an obligatory D-Day mission. I feel like the campaign certainly could have taken a different angle there, but at the same time, if you haven't been playing shooters as long as me and you haven't played a whole bunch of different D-Day introductory missions, then this one would be pretty exciting for you. It is pretty much verbatim following exactly what happens in the Saving Private Ryan movie, which I thought was a little bit disappointing. I thought it would have been more interesting if they took a slightly different angle. But no, you get on the boats, you get off, you take machine gun fire, everything goes crazy, and then you use the Bangalores to blow up some area to get cover and then push up behind the pillboxes and clear them out. It's all very, very standard compared to all the other D-Day missions I've run, but it didn't make it any less exciting or intense as I played it. The visuals are better than they've ever been. This is the best looking D-Day mission I've ever played. Now there's 11 missions and then an epilogue and it took me a little over five hours to complete. Other people are reporting about six and a half hours on average to beat the campaign and I think it'll depend on what difficulty you select and how proficient you are at first person shooters. Um, but the campaign length felt appropriate to me. I certainly wouldn't have wanted it too much longer as it might have started to feel a bit more repetitive at that point. Some of the combat still feels very much like standard Call of Duty combat where you might need to put six, seven, eight rounds into an enemy soldier before they go down. So it does feel a little bit more arcadey in that sense in that uh, uh, some of the soldiers are a little more bullet spongy. Um, and I didn't love that aspect of it, but it didn't also detract that much from the game. I knew it's a game. It's not supposed to be replicating reality or realistic combat. It's over the top set pieces where when you get a sniper rifle, you're probably gonna kill like 50 guys before you switch over to a different weapon. There's some missions where you're sniping and just wrecking entire platoons of guys. You are the standard Call of Duty super soldier. That hasn't really deviated much. They've just put you in a setting that feels much more realistic and more believable. Now, just like the D-Day mission, which was taken pretty much directly from Saving Private Ryan, we also have the Battle of the Bulge mission, which was actually really cool. And that was very similar to how it was portrayed in Band of Brothers. Then again, both the film and the show were very very accurate historically, so it does make sense to use those mediums as reference when designing a game around those uh, conflicts if you're trying to do it realistically. Those were some very cool battles. Some interesting new stuff that I hadn't really seen uh, too much in film or TV before was um, some of the French liberation missions. You get to do some interesting missions where you're going into German-occupied France to gather intel and help the French resistance liberate France. And those missions are actually pretty cool. Normally I'm not a huge fan 
of stealth gameplay, but uh, they were done well enough that I felt like I actually was an operative sneaking into a base to gather intel and having to covertly take out enemies. Now, just like Band of Brothers, the storyline really focuses on the men of the platoon and the men that you're fighting next to and who are sacrificing next to you. And all of their characters were really well written, perhaps a little bit cliche at times, but not too over the top, especially for a AAA title. I thought they were all fairly believable. There's definitely some plot lines that were just directly lifted from either TV shows or other war films that I thought were a little bit cliche, but again, for a World War II game, I thought it was pretty well done and directly in line. In fact, there's moments during the end of the campaign that really uh, got to me, honestly, emotionally, because I know it is following realistic events, and uh, I have to give cod credit for actually dipping into the holocaust element of world war ii a bit that is something that's a bit hard to deal with especially from an action over the top shooter game but the fact that they did dip into that storyline a bit and it did it justice was a surprising and a welcome addition now again i did play the game on pc and benefited from higher frame rate higher resolution and better visuals in general uh, but there were some drawbacks to this and cod is definitely a game designed first and foremost for the console platform as that's where it sells way more copies versus the pc platform and some of the pc port issues definitely started to show through during the quicktime events now if you're not familiar with the Lingo QuickTime event, it basically just refers to an action event in a game where the animation is too complicated to actually just do it with uh, player controls. So instead, they basically lock your character into a predetermined animation where in order to complete a combat sequence, you have to tap a bunch of different buttons on the keyboard or your controller in the right sequence in order for that animation to play out properly. And if you fail spamming spacebar quick enough or failing to hit your mark in some way, then the animation will go to like you dying or being defeated. I've never been a huge fan of these quick time events in COD games. I've sort of accepted that they're there. The problem I had though is that on PC, they were not properly optimized and I play on a relatively low sensitivity. Some of the quick time events required me to drag my mouse across the mouse pad like three or four times as fast as possible to try and get my mouse within a certain crosshair and then hit like E on the keyboard in order to like block a punch or something like this. It seems like it was tested either on controller or tested by somebody with a much higher mouse sensitivity than me that was like, yep, this is good, this works. Uh, and just sort of overlook the fact that, hey, if you're playing it on a lower DPI on your mouse or a low sensitivity, this is going to be almost impossible to do. And so it was frustrating because I was like kicking ass in a mission, killing tons of Germans and Nazis and whatnot, and just like feeling like a total badass. And then it would put me into a quick time event in which I'd get into a fist fight with one random guy and lose three times in a row because I wasn't able to drag my mouse across the mouse pad fast enough to hit the button to win the fist fight. And so that took me right out of the combat, reminded me that I was playing a PC port and that uh, it wasn't well optimized and just like these elaborate set pieces and great ambiance and immersion of the game was immediately killed whenever one of these events would start. And there was a lot of them in the game, enough that uh, really frustrated me throughout the campaign. So I'd be really enjoying myself to really annoyed with what was going on and then the quick time event would end or I'd uh, beat it or I'd have to up my mouse DPI to beat it and then continue on with the campaign. And so that was really my biggest gripe with the campaign in general was just that the quick time events were poorly optimized on PC and fixing that would have definitely improved the immersive experience. Other smaller issues that I had with the game was that COD tries to incorporate a lot of other action types into their campaign. So it's not just first person shooting, which is what COD does the best. They incorporate things like driving sequences or tank sequences or flying sequences which have become pretty standard in COD games, but they've always felt super arcadey and unrealistic. And I guess they're kind of a fun distraction at times, but I personally didn't enjoy the tank combat that much. I felt like the controls were really, really awkward. And the same goes for one of the flying missions in which you're uh, protecting a bomber squadron from fighter planes. And it's cool that they incorporated this into the game and they clearly spent a lot of time making this mission look incredible visually, but the controls are just so painfully basic 
uh, it would have just been nice to have the option for higher level controls or a more realistic combat experience. I'm not saying full on full flight realism or something like that, but striking a medium or a balance that's just a little bit more on the realistic side would have been better for people who I think um, might enjoy that more or having the option to turn the controls up to a more realistic uh, control experience. I think these sequences have been what I've always not enjoyed about COD games the most and thinking like, you know what, maybe instead of putting these vehicle sequences in here that just feel super lame, just focus on the shooter sequence and show me a cutscene or something of some aerial combat. Um, but uh, it is a COD game and I think fans have come to expect these sort of arcade amusement park shooter on rails experiences and maybe people would criticize the game more for not having them at this point but as someone who appreciates a shooter that's a bit more immersive doesn't take you out of the element or the more realistic aspects of the game um, I definitely count them as criticisms I've never enjoyed shooters on rails um, and so I'll certainly count it as a hit against the game but if you enjoy those more over-the-top arcadey experiences then you'll certainly enjoy these elements in COD World War II Anyway, the gameplay itself is still very much in line with what you would expect from other Call of Duty titles. It's just the story, the writing, and the atmosphere of this game that I think is actually spot on and very good. And if you've really been hankering for a good World War II single player experience, then I would absolutely recommend Call of Duty World War II. Other than some of the things that I would consider minor issues, overall the single player experience is solid and a good time from start to finish. As always guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think of the Call of Duty World War II single player campaign in the comments, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.